Vernon Ziegler, Day 26 I screwed up big time. I got careless with one of the dead and got its acid blood all over me. I could feel it burning into my legs, but I paid no attention to that as I hacked the thing into quarters. Now my arms and legs are all but destroyed. It is summer, day 26. I'm a crawling set of splints. Every day I crawl to the water heaters to refresh my water and crawl back to bed. I don't know if I'm going to come back from this one, so I asked Fallon to take dictation for me into Mark's diary. Day 27, Vernon Ziegler My limbs feel a little better today. All I did yesterday was crawl back and forth to the water heaters and fill up my hydration pack and a gallon jug. That took eight hours. I guzzled cough syrup and passed out. I think I'm recovering somewhat, but still very crippled. Vernon Ziegler, Day 28 I woke up from a cough syrup-induced nightmare in the middle of the night. I feel that my limbs really are mending somewhat, but food supplies will soon be dwindling. I've eaten most of the fruit leathers and still am unable to cook any of the pasta or other foods. I'm going to try crawling to that pile of dead in the yard. There should be fresh MREs on them, much closer to my bed than the warehouse. I don't think I can crawl to the warehouse yet. Fallon has stood by my side these last few days, constantly changing my bandages. If I survive this, it will be to her credit, not mine. Hello everybody, I'm Slash and VC. Welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. This is Vernon Ziegler our erstwhile maimed character who just now showed just one uh, change in the pips. The left arm and the right leg have one uh, half of a pip each, it looks like. Looking at the uh, medical menu, I see uh, left arm, right arm, left leg, and right leg actually show the same indicators but the percent is different so this left arm that's recovering is crippled 80 percent and the right leg that's recuperating 86 percent the hands let's see the arm is at 91 percent i was just about to have vernon crawl down to the mre pile or actually the pile of zombie bodies that hopefully contains mres i noticed my move speed so uh let's look at our base move cost nine thousand not bad not bad at all it's not fifty thousand anymore let's take a step it's 2 17 a.m dragging this clothing Vernon arrives at the next square by 2.18 a.m. That is considerably fast. Uh, it being 2 a.m., however, if he's going to crawl that fast, one minute per square. One, two, three, four, five. I don't want to crawl out here in the middle of the night. Uh, I think Vernon's going to return to bed to wait until daylight. Now, I had been thinking that I was going to be spending, you know, the better part of two hours crawling to the end of that hallway. But if it's only going to take a few minutes, let's see if we can swap positions with Gasket. Yeah. And we might as well wait a few more hours in bed. Now, did we... We don't seem to have hauled our sheet on that move. I guess when you swap positions with somebody you stop hauling i'm gonna haul these items over here we'll go back to the bed for uh two hours let's do this wait for a while let's give it three hours and then we'll have actual daylight out there that'll be just fine she can guard the door oh i just saw some more improvement left leg gained a pip we're on the road to recovery all right, it's 5 a.m. and Vernon is very hungry. So let's uh, make sure we're still prone. Okay, very good. Move toward the food pile. Great, that didn't take too long at all. Let's eat some things. Dehydrated fruit. 
As you can see, the dehydrated fruit pile has shrunk considerably. My main concern was going to be food. All right, we're dragging too many things. Let's move a few things over here. Uh, the combat blouse, combat shirt with heroin, ankle socks. Um, yeah. So we do have a flashlight and we could almost potentially use it since things are not taking too awful long. I see my timer is going by in seconds now because it's taking 543.40. 54450 about one minute to crawl us one square that's great slide the door open can we crouch peek I wonder yeah we can crouch peek I've never attempted that works great all right the pile of bodies I was thinking of is over here so let's do uh, we'll have to uh, crawl to the doorway Go into view mode, look at items. Let's see if there's MREs in that stack. There's clean water. Uh, sugary cereal. Is that it? Hmm. I think there's more of a pile there though. I'm gonna crawl a little further out. Let's have another look. No MRE packages out there? Oh no. Hmm. All right, let's try to think about where we left another pile of bodies. <laughs> Crap. Uh, oh, left arm is a full vertical bar now. Right arm is showing some improvement. Oh, heck yeah. Let's crawl this way. I really hope we don't meet any uh, zombies. And this is why I'm not taking the tunnel. <laughs> That's where we met the zombie that put us in this condition. Okay, I'm seeing some things just above Vernon here. Let's look. It's just canteens. Where did all the MREs go? Maybe that's under containers. No, it's not. Clothing, mall webbing. Okay, wait. The MRE pouch is inside of a load-bearing vest. So the MRE pouch is showing up in the clothing tab. Hmm. All right, let's crawl toward that pile right there. I'm going to use the advanced inventory sorting thing to indicate the items in our way. This. There we go. That way we can go ahead and haul only the things we want to haul. Uh, oops, I think I turned caps lock on. North. Move everything that's north. There we go. Alright, let's see what we've got for MREs here. It should now that we're next to it. Oh. Well, there's none in that stack. There we go. One MRE package. And we'll take it. Looks like he's holding it in his inventory, even. Have a look and see if I'm missing anything. Okay, I'm not. So, the armory... I, I think I said armory before, but I meant to say warehouse. The armory is right next door. The warehouse is across this road, past the burned building, across this road, and is it right here? Yeah, right here. <laughs> it's kind of a long crawl. <laughs> but we're going to... Uh, we're gonna pass a lot of bodies along the way. We can probably just... Oh, we can't crawl through those windows, though. We have a door out of here. 
Yeah, that right there is broken. Okay, we're crawling back through the other end of our base right now. This will be fine. I think it's good exercise for him. And at a minute per move, this is a lot less painful. So guess what I've been doing all week? It's been, what, four days since the last episode for Vernon Ziegler? I worked a lot of overtime. So I would just come home from work and crawl around for an hour or two before bed. Do the long crawl down the hallway. Grab some water, drink, crawl back, eat, go back to sleep. Rinse and repeat. And that was basically, I don't remember exactly which day is which, but I think that was my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday playing Cataclysm. <laughs> I'm going to search around and see what we can see from here. Looks like we've left a grenade laying around somewhere. Look at that. All right, food-wise, chocolate bars and a paper wrapper. And there may be some food stuck in clothing. Let's see if we can get down to a clothing tab. Ah, container tab. MRE package in the rubble. It'd be kind of hard to get to. Another one in the rubble. A lot easier to get to. Military ID card. Okay, so if we were to crawl to the north end of that rubble pile, we could get to an MRE. I think it might be easier to just crawl to the warehouse. All right, I think I'm going to take a cut here. As you can see, I'm just going to crawl there with my bodyguard by my side. As long as we don't come across any re res zombies, this is going to be a boring trip. And I'll be back when we've recovered more or made it back to bed or had some problem along the way. See you in a moment. All right, I made it to the uh, warehouse. Even before I got all the way inside the warehouse, I found uh, a couple of MREs lying here. I'm going to grab those for myself. Oh, nope, I can only carry one. Now, we don't have much in our inventory, and we can't have much in our inventory. But I realized as I was thinking about things that we can use uh, Fallon Reese to actually carry some of this stuff. She just needs, you know, an assault pack or a backpack or whatever. So let's get her outfitted while we're here. Now once I get in here, I think I can use my light amp goggles to uh, see a little better. Let's go ahead and put those on. This is why I brought them with me. <clears throat> there we go. Now we can see clearly. And there don't appear to be any zombies in there. Thank God. Alright, so the foodstuffs, I think, are over here on this shelf. Yep. Mm -hmm. But we need to get her a backpack first. So where are that at? Those are more MRE packages. So I think the backpacks are on these shelves over here. Let's crawl over here and take a look. Fallon, you are going to be so excited when you get a hold of all these goodies. I know I am. Okay, those are foodstuffs. Then that shelf is gas masks and various tools. Which I don't think she needs any of those. Then we've got user manuals and such like over here. Which we could actually train her up on some skills with those. Now this is what I'm talking about. We could give her, she's not going to have to engage in melee combat, ever. Because I'm going to give her the combat shotgun and let her go crazy with it. Um, so I don't think I have to worry about her torso encumbrance. We could give her a large tactical backpack. Or outfit her with the assault gear, mole assault gear. Military rucksack or duffel bag. I think we're going to go for... <sighs> I find the mole stuff to be very encumbering, so I'm gonna, but I'm gonna give her the large tactical backpack. Now I think if I'm in the vicinity of the items and I'm in the vicinity of her, when I talk to her, I haven't found the cabin yet, honey. Hold on, let's get outfitted first. 
there's something I want you to do. I want you to use this item. Oh, no, it's not giving me the option of stuff that is on that shelf. I'm surprised. So, how are we going to manage that? Is it giving me the option of stuffing that I'm dragging? It may be... I have to sort her armor. Let's see. Miscellaneous rules. More about your abilities. Okay, something I want you to do... If I say, let's trade items, I thought it didn't use just my inventory, that it used the shelves also. Apparently I'm wrong about that. <laughs> Maybe she has to be closer to this shelf in order for it to work. Either way, we need to get her directly across from me, apparently. I won't be able to wield the backpack. Okay, here we go. Now, if I'm right next to the shelf, maybe it will work. Something I want you to do, I want you to use this item. No, it's not. Hmm. I'm going to put it at my feet and see what happens. So let's use this menu to look at the tactical backpack. And pick the floor under us. Nah, I already know this isn't going to work, I think. But let's move one. Oops, no. That's not how we do that. Uh, Let's see. Oh, we just hit enter once. There we go. Let's hit the sort armor button. See if we can do it that way. Nope, that's just a way of sorting things. Okay. Yeah, it's only doing items worn. All right. So I can offer a worn item. Let's see if we can wear the large tactical backpack. Yes, I can. Okay, now I'm going to talk to her. There's something I want you to do. I want you to use this item. The large tactical backpack. She says, thanks. I'll wear that now. All right. Now, I don't know if she had some kind of backpack on. So let's see if we go to trade items. If I need to take her other backpack off or something. Alter top, large tank. Yeah, she had a leather backpack. Wow. Actually, a leather backpack is really nice. So maybe... Maybe having her have the large tactical backpack is unnecessary. Never mind. Fine, you have a backpack. Good. Let's drop... Where did, where did it go in my inventory? Did it go to my feet, probably? She puts on their backpack. You put on your backpack. Yeah, it fell to my feet. Okay. All right, in that case, never mind. We want to uh, have her hold on to some MREs for us. So, let's... Uh, okay, let's talk to her. Uh, I want to trade items. Okay, here we go. Take this MRE and this MRE. Looks like a deal. Also, I'm holding, apparently, three small plastic bottles that I do not need. I want to get them out of my hauling stack. Like so. Let's go down here and have her grab... Uh-oh, so we're hungry again. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, I have nothing to eat because I gave it all to her. So let's crawl down here. We'll eat and drink. Yeah, we've still got the water. Hit to double check. Great. Uh, any MRE that we grab, we can carry two, right? I'm going to grab two of these and then move away from the stack friend of mine in the comments pointed out that you don't want to eat one item out of every MRE package because then they're no longer sealed. So let's try, these are just the things that are in the MRE packages that I grabbed. We ought to be able to craft, honestly, some uh, peanut butter sandwiches or something. 
cheese sandwiches. Uh, oh no, because actually if I craft in this room, it's going to try to use all of the crafting ingredients that are in this room. So let's avoid doing that. Okay, we can eat some dehydrated fruit and some chocolate can- Although, is it going to ask us if we want to use the ingredients in our inventory? Let's see. Let's say I want to make a cheese sandwich. Can't see to craft. Okay, never mind. Let's just eat. Cookies, chocolate candy, Asian beef and vegetables, frankfurters and beans, cheese spread, and crackers. Here we go. Now, the leftovers? Wait, how did I manage? Oh, okay, the MRE packages are now unsealed, and they have fewer items. I'm going to drop them over there on the table. So now we're full. That's good. I should be able to grab two more MRE packages and then hand them off. Uh, grab two more. Oops. And hand them to her. Now, I don't know how much she can carry. Uh, this time, I guess, uh, can I look at from here? If I talk to her, I can look at it. Here we go. <clears throat> it's going to tell me what she's wearing and wielding. Size up her stats. We know exactly what her stats are, more or less. 10 to 12, 8 to 9, 10 to 12, 8 to 10. Not tired. We'll need water and food. Of course, she doesn't eat or drink. We've got that mod. Check her opinion. She's very trusting. She's a little wary of us. She doesn't care about us, and she's ambivalent, anger-wise. Doesn't care about you. Ouch. That hurts my feelings. But she trusts us. That's the main thing. All right. I think we can grab two more, hand them off to her, grab two more just for us to carry, and uh, then we'll head to the armory and see if we can get her a better weapon. We'll talk to her one last time. And I'm wondering if in all of this trading where I'm giving her things but not taking anything from her, if I'm building. Ah, okay, she has run out of backpack space. Oh, here we go. We can look at volume 20 of 34. Okay, what's the volume of an MRE package? Oh, I'm surprised. Free holster volume, used holsters. She's not overweight, but she's over, um, doesn't have a, uh, probably that leather backpack doesn't have a pocket big enough for both of these MREs. There, she could take one of them. So I'm going to grab one more. There we go. Later on, and probably off screen, I'll take her down here. Well, we could outfit her with a helmet and stuff right now, actually. There's no reason not to do that. Am I dragging at the tactical backpack still? I am. Hmm. Um, hmm. Okay, I could insert MREs into the tactical backpack then, theoretically. Let's see if I can apply the backpack. Or no, I would have to put it on, which the game allows me to do. Um, I ought to be able to then look at it in my inventory, possibly like this, and then hit insert. There we go. Let's see how many MREs we can get in this backpack. Could not put that one in there. Alright, we got a bunch of them in that backpack, though. 18 MREs in the backpack. Alright, drop the... Is there any reason we shouldn't wear it? Let's look at our encumbrance. That's a torso encumbrance of 64. It's no worse <laughs> than the encumbrance that we've got going on with our arms and legs. So let's just stick with it, I guess. We'll see if it slows us down any. Uh, no, not really. All right, let's grab Fallon a nice helmet. 
to protect her precious head. We could even give her one of these freaky looking masks. She's not going to look like a combat medic. Well, wait a minute. I don't know what a combat medic even looks like. I just assume they don't wear this uh, ballistic mask. To uh, get the ballistic mask is too heavy to pick up, so um, let's drop our sling and tactical backpack and see if we can get the mask, one of them. Okay, great. If I chat with her now, I want you to use this item, ballistic mask. She says, thanks, I'll wear that now. Oh yeah, makes her look freaky deaky. <laughs> All right, let's get her a helmet. Army helmet? Uh, I can't get a helmet. Uh, I can wear the helmet, though. Okay, then I can chat with her. And I want you to wear... This helmet. He says, thanks, I'll wear that now. Oh yeah, she's looking tough now. We might as well get a helmet of our own. All right. What's this, a flight helmet? Tactical helmet. Has pockets and stuff on it. That might be a better option for us, actually. The tactical helmet uh, would provide less protection, but it would give us somewhere to keep a... Maybe a morphine package in a syringe or something. Now, I don't know if we can wear the gloves. Let's try the gloves. A pair of tactical gloves. Yep. So now we can talk to her. I want you to use tactical gloves. Great. So now let's look at what she's wearing. It says boy shorts and socks. A skirt. She needs something better than a skirt, probably. A dress shirt and dress shoes. Okay, well she needs a full set of clothing then. Bandana, cotton hat. I could take the bandana and cotton hat off of her. She's not going to need those. Ballistic mask, army helmet, tactical gloves, trench coat. Okay, that's her, basically her outside armor. Oh, trench coat and a leather vest. Nice storage items though. And some of these are holding our MREs. We may let her keep those until we can um, carry things ourselves. Knit scarf, leather belt, and game watch. So basically, if we just give her some... Uh, wait a minute. Boy shirt. Okay, that's underwear, I guess. If we just replace her skirt and dress shirt and dress shoes and take off the redundant bandana and cotton hat, then we'll call that good for today. I'll let her double up on her armor until we get to that point. So this is ballistic vest, knee pads, and elbow pads. Hmm. Does she need knee pads and elbow pads? I don't know, but I don't want to try to put them on my own limbs just to trade them to her. I'll tell you that right now. So the uh, other clothing items are up here. Looks like there's a ski mask. Is that what this is? Oh, that's what a ball that's what they call a balaclava. I call a ski mask. Okay. Helmet liner. Hmm. She may want a helmet liner, so we'll give her that. She can get some combat boots. The small webbing belt might be better than the leather belt she has. And then we'll get her some pants. Now those are winter pants though. We have regular pants? Yeah, regular pants there. See if it'll let me put on the boots. It did. And also, I'd like to wear... the helmet liner. There we go. Oh, uh, which... I've got a helmet on now, so I'm going to have to wear two helmet liners. Well, I'll trade one to her. We can wear the mole webbing belt. Let's examine that. 
Commonly used compatible pouches. It's a belt. Protection for the waist. Straps to the torso, I guess. Technically the waist, but I don't know how that works. Okay. Let's wear one of those. All right, I'm going to talk to her. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to use a helmet liner. I want you to put on these combat boots. Should I take something off? Yes. All right, so she took off her other shoes. And I want you to try this mole webbing belt. Alright. Great. She's getting to be a lot more set up. Now she needs a pair of pants. Oh, I need another helmet liner just for myself. I don't want that helmet to be rubbing uncomfortably on my head. pants now this is not good for us well I know that this is just a way to trade it so I want you to use these army pants great what kind of pants do we have on well we won't really know what the hell we've got for armor until we get healed and have a look at what we dropped back at the base anyway there's a combat blouse I don't think she needs and there's an underwear aisle down here but I think we're done outfitting Fallon Reese for now. Gloves, towel, blanket, sheet, and egg, uh, ammo pouches and this kind of thing. Do these, uh, assume that these pouches may strap to the mole belt. I'm not going to worry about it too much right now as far as she's got the backpack. Let's go get her a weapon. I'm going to take a jump cut on my way to the armory. I will be right back. And I'm back. I have great news. Something wonderful happened while we were waiting here. Uh, what happened is I crawled into the armory building and Gasket Reese sat down in this chair and went to sleep. That was about eight hours ago. So I just sat Vernon down over here and we sat in the dark and uh, Vernon rested while Gasket slept. I think that she got some well-earned sleep after guarding our crippled butts for the last four days. Got up out of the chair, started walking over here. Oh, what, what did I just say? That's right, I forgot to go prone. And uh, it looks like Vernon is now walking. Let's take a step in this direction. Are we hauling stuff? Let's make sure we're hauling stuff. Okay, we're hauling stuff. Look at that. Okay. 8.01 p.m. Take a step. 8.01.20. 8.01.29. We're at nine seconds per square. <laughs> yes! Oh. We're on the road to recovery. Unless, you know, I hope something. I don't know if there's a mechanic where you can trip and fall and hurt yourself or anything like that, but... Anyway, for right now, Vernon is actually stumbling around on his splinted legs. We could get in here and arm up our buddy. Gasket, welcome to the armory. This place is freaking awesome. I'm going to wear the light amp goggles and activate those so that we can see what the heck is in here. Because the shotgun, if I'm not mistaken, is on the very end of this aisle here. Oh, nice. She shut the door behind her. I love it when NPCs do that. It's just so considerate. <laughs> I love it. Um, is it this? Uh, is it these crates? Or that's the IAR 556 five, NATO rounds. Yeah, I think it's down this little aisle right here. Uh, this is the C4. We've got 16 C4 explosives. Wow. We're going to have to put those to good use. How many of these are they? 88 of the grenade launcher rounds. Holy cow. 
I've got two of the grenade launchers there. She has launcher skill, I think. We're gonna try the missile launcher too at some point. Okay, flashbangs and smoke bombs. Those are the missile launcher missiles. Incendiary grenades, anti-tank guided missile. That's what I, one of the turrets that I want to mount on our vehicle. Um, dang it. This is not the area with the shotgun, however, uh, allegedly. Hmm. Look here again. Guns. There's just one gun there. Yeah, I've got the wrong aisle. All right, uh, push her away. Uh, sorry, Gasket. I hope that doesn't upset. Oh, dang it. I didn't mean to swap either. Start calling. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's try this aisle. Uh, let's look down here. What do we got? Stanix. No, pretty sure that's not it. <clears throat> ah. Okay, the shotgun is in this aisle. All right, let's give her a shotgun. Oh my god, look how fast we're walking. It's like regular speed. Wrong aisle. Oh, this is great. I needed this. I needed some hope. Okay, that's a shotgun, so... M110 bolt rifle. Right. This, I think, is what I was thinking of. <clears throat> now, the, the Mossberg would be an improvement all by itself, because that's a nine-shot thing. But let's look at this one here. Modular Accessory Shotgun System. Oh, it's an under-barrel bolt-action shotgun inspired by the Master Key, and which fixed most of its predecessor's problems. This one is configured for standalone usage. Hmm. Okay, it's compatible. Oh, I see. With a three-round magazine or a five-round magazine. It's got an integrated mass stock. So what this is actually for is to put a shotgun as an underbarrel to your current weapon. <clears throat> That's a thing Vernon may want to play with, actually. Let's look at the Mossberg. Military and police-oriented version of the Mossberg 500. This is the 590A1. Features a heavier barrel, a bayonet lug. Ooh. And a different magazine tube. Capacity nine rounds. Yeah, she needs this, and I would love to give her... Okay, it's got an integrated sights mount and an integrated bottom mount for attaching an underbarrel accessory designed to be permanently installed onto almost any weapon along with some fasteners ideal for bringing out your inner tactical on older guns integrated mod bottom mount underbarrel mount so i think does that mean i can use it as an underbarrel <laughs> or i can put an underbarrel looks like i can add an underbarrel to it possibly Okay. Well, either way, we've got to figure out how to give this to her. So, can I wield it? No. You are too weak to wield it with only one arm. Right. And we can't fit it in our pocket. Hmm. So... We uh, really need to attach... That's how are we going to do this? Let's look at our inventory. Okay, let's wear the large tactical backpack and see if we can get the gun. Okay, those don't fit in any pocket. The Bossberg shotgun does. <laughs> yes. What is the M1014? Oh, wait, this is another shotgun. Let's see, this one holds eight rounds of shot. Dual pistons for enhanced reliability, collapsible buttstock to reduce the length. It's a combat shotgun, and it's one of the finest combat shotguns available. And we'll give her that one. It's got, we can also mount it as an auto-loading shotgun. Okay, grab one of these. We're overburdened, but that's okay. Chat with... <coughs> Alan Reese. And hopefully I can just tell her to use this shotgun. 
guns. I want you to use this. She says, nope. My current weapon is better than this. New weapon value, 313.3 versus 313.5. Yes, but honey, your gun only shoots two rounds. So, maybe... Okay. Can I just see your gun for a minute? Can we trade items? And... Um... See if she'll trade her wielded weapon. She will trade it. Double barrel shotgun. Let's take that. Yep, she'll trade it to me because she trusts me. She always says, what is it, friend? Because that's how she sees me. So now, I want you to use this item. The M1014 8-shot Benelli combat shotgun. Very good. Now... I want to find out how many rounds of ammo she's got. I know we were just on that screen. She's got 31 rounds, so she's probably fine. Um, we can have her drop off anything she's not using, or we'll probably just trade out. Like, I mean, the shotgun hulls and stuff, she doesn't need to carry those. But that's okay for now. Um... My question is, is she going to reload the shotgun? So, let's see if I stand here for a bit. There, she reloaded her 1014. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get multiple messages saying that. Let's wait it out for a few minutes here. Okay, now I'm going to chat with her. down to 23 double odd shot and I want to see yes the 1014 is full that's quite a few rounds for now I think that's enough rounds to get us started as far as double odd shot should be the um, cat's meow you know but we could give her explosive slugs <clears throat> bleshets or um, slugs the slugs Give the shotgun <clears throat> the range capabilities of a rifle, but they're rather inaccurate. The explosive slugs sound a little frightening. While an explosive <clears throat> from a shotgun sounds impressive, its practical applications are limited at best. The loss in mass in order to accommodate an explosive give it much less impact force compared to traditional ammunition. The relatively small size of the slug can only accommodate a limited amount of explosives, resulting in a fairly underwhelming explosion. These traits make it a utility tool for damaging barriers and disrupting other explosive devices, rather than something for anti-personnel use. And I appreciate that the um, Cataclysm creators and modders took the time to explain to us why explosive shotgun shells are not awesome. <laughs> because we would bitch, you know. <laughs> hey, man, come on. What's with the damage on these things? All right. <clears throat> we've got our own weapon somewhere in the other room. And we can't use anything we've got anyway. So, But I believe right now, if we have a look at this lady, let's examine or sort her armor. She's wearing conflicting stuff. We need to get the skirt probably out of her inventory, the bandana, the cotton hat. And these kinds of things, but I'm going to do that when we get back to the base, and I'm not dragging and wearing a bunch of stuff that I myself don't need. Oh dear, no, we're not going toward that staircase. There could be bad things down there. goggles now or is it night out oh it's night Let's see what our night vision looks like not too great so I'm gonna stay close to the wall we'll head back toward the bedroom I'm sure Vernon well I don't know whether he's gonna get tired or not to be honest 
I think he's uh he requires less sleep than your average bear. Now I can follow this hallway. We can now get to our crafting room. That's nice. Let's drop this stuff off at the bedroom first. What is this? Okay. Is she gonna come in here? Ah, there she is. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Now, now she's ready for full combat. Love it. All right, let's look at unloading our stuff here. I want to drop my large tactical backpack and then unload it, I think. Okay, so we unloaded everything out of it. Now, what else are we carrying here? Cough syrup to help us sleep, a syringe, the light amp goggles, and our clothing and our splints. So we'll just stick with all that stuff. I want to sort my stuff out. Whatever's at my feet needs to go. We got a clothing pile here. Okay. The uh, shotgun can go. Whoops. Utility shelf. Um, okay. My feet. The gun shelf. Right? Yeah, there we go. We can move her shotgun over there, and then all these MREs floor directly below you, and then over here, this will be our food shelf. Let's go ahead and move the MRE packages over there. All right. That's fantastic. I wish I'd have put a lamp in here when we were doing our electrical stuff. But oh well. Uh, now, I think it would be a good time to just drink some water and try to drink some cough syrup and go to sleep. That's my next idea. I want to see if we can get past the point of being disabled or um, whatever it calls itself. We'll go get some more clean water when we wake up. I'm just going to tank up on clean water. And then let's tank up on cough medicine. I'm going to hop in the bed. And we should still have a sheet or blanket or something. No, we don't. I moved it elsewhere, didn't I? Here we go. Let's get the blanket. Or the sheet, whichever one it is. Here we go. And I'm going to eat the cough syrup. Two doses and try to sleep. There we go. Cough syrup's been working really well to put him to sleep, but I hope it doesn't become a habit. Oh, yes! Left arm, right arm, showing some improvement. Right leg, showing some improvement. Come on, left leg. Give me one more pip. My survival skill and bashing weapons skills have rusted. Well, big surprise. Uh-oh, left arm, right arm turned yellow. Ha ha ha! Wow. You suddenly register a buzzing in your senses. It's getting louder and your head starts to throb. Something is coming. <laughs> I think we'll be safe in here. Uh, except that we were left. Now she closed the doors behind us, but she's gonna want to investigate sounds and I think I should tell her not to do that. <clears throat> now normally, you guys, if you've been following my channel, you know that as a rule, Whenever there's a portal storm, I go out in the portal storm, I go in the portal. And I run the portal maze, and I come out of there with my dexterity bonus and laugh all the way to the bank. However, in this particular case, we won't be doing that. Okay, stop waiting. Yeah, look at her. She's on the verge of going to investigate noises. Talk to Fallon. We're going to have to override her normals. Let's set some miscellaneous rules, and I'm going to say don't walk through closed doors and don't investigate noises that you can't see. So let me double check by reading the top up here. She 
will close doors. She will not investigate noises. She will not go places that require opening a door. So that's a temporary override. Let's read our log. We got a neat little message here where it says, you can feel the presence of something nearby, cracked in a way you can't put into words. Check mission log for details. A million, uh, reality is breaking. A million tiny pinpricks in space open for an instant and smoke fills the air. From the west, you hear a high-pitched squeal. Yeah, okay. Let's check ourselves out. <clears throat> the arm is down to impaired. 40%. Not, uh, whatever it said before, crippled. Oh, base move cost, 373. That's a lot better than 6,000. Now, we've still got a crippled left leg. So for whatever reason, this left leg is in a lot worse shape than anything else, but it's still splinted. We ought to be able to walk. Let's see if we can wield that shotgun now. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I don't know if this is going to break our arms to shoot a gun, but I've got a shotgun. Hell yes. All right, I'm going to go back over here next to the bed. If anything opens that door, I'm going to blast it. Wait an hour. Person spotted. Stop waiting. Yes. Okay, where did we spot the person? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. That's what a person looks like. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. It says, person. It is about as fast as you. A common human that looks exactly like human do. You can see it. It can see you. You know it knows you can see it. It knows you know you can see him. It moves toward you. Hostile. Oh boy. See a person? That person is actually glowing on our minimap as well. All right, Fallon. Wait it out. Wait for the person to come on. You hear Fallon and Gasket Reese saying, Switch on. It's go time. From the west, you hear a high-pitched squeal. Oh, shit. Perfect. Thank you, Cataclysm, for bringing the fun. We just barely got to the point where we can walk again, and we've got a large-scale portal storm. Yes. Now, it says uh, under the mission map, Investigate strange location. You could find this place upside down, dizzy and blindfolded. Its presence is too altered to allow the mercy of ignorance. You guys look back. I've got two episodes in the uh, Mark Crump series where Mark Crump went into the portal storm uh, transdimensional maze. Really fun and interesting stuff. I got a kick out of it. I'm not a big fan of hiding from portal storms in this oh by the way we can check our map and it may show us yeah look here this is the heart of the portal storm today in this field south of peabody investigate strange location is centered right here so just outside the minefield a large-scale portal storm like a time tornado is ripping through the landscape and we may go out there to investigate after the portal storm has passed and find that it has destroyed structures, collapsed buildings, or any number of other horrible things because in the Marcus Crump episode, it touched down right next to a building and basically sucked half the building away. Um, all the way to the basement. Whether that can happen to the entire military base or not, I don't know. We're getting on in summer. So what I'm basically doing is just tapping the wait button and watching my mini-map. The person has actually stopped moving toward us. It's saying that the moment feels thick, as if it's not quite over. If we were out in the portal storm walking around, we would sometimes get a rubber band effect where the time distorted and we actually went back in, into the past 
and then forward into the future or back into the present I should say once again the person is now 21 tiles away and moving toward us very rapidly is uh oh you hear Fallon Gasket Reese saying what is making that sound I can hear footsteps yes well even more importantly Light ant goggles. Oh, yes. Okay. I saw a flash of light there. I didn't know if my light amp goggles went off or what. So the person is now 10 tiles away. He is going to get blasted when he comes in here. I'm going to apply the light amp goggles now. There we go. Now we can see something. Let's zoom out. Okay. The person is coming in the door. And weirdly, because I'm wearing the light amp goggles, I'm seeing him in, like, telepathic light amp vision. Look at him come down the hallway there and bringing the green light with him as he comes. We're on the other side of this door. <clears throat> I don't think he even has to open doors, but I could be wrong. And by God, if he opens that door, it's over. Hey, get off my trap wall. Here he comes. He's coming for the door. Can I start aiming at him? No, I cannot. You gonna open the door? He doesn't seem to be opening the door. Okay, cool. Should we open the door? <laughs> Let's examine him. Wow! It says fatally dangerous. Okay, we won't open the door. We'll just wait. Don't open the door, Fallon. I'm telling you, it's a bad idea. Got a bad feeling about this. He was like, he's out there like, oh, it's, don't worry about it. I'm just a person. Jesus, it could be the spirit of Marcus Crump, for God's sakes. Don't open that door or whatever you do. Wearing his little newsboy cap. Spotted two persons. Where's the other one at? He is uh, 59 tiles away. I think we're going to be okay. Let's see where we are in the episode timer today. It's probably about time to wrap things up. 55 minutes. I usually shoot for an hour. Um, what if we try to do wait a while, five minutes? Person is dangerously close. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be annoying, really. She says, was that footsteps? Uh, Fallon apparently cannot actually see the person. She's hearing the footsteps and reporting on that, but she hasn't said there's a person over there. So that's interesting. I'm glad I told her not to go outside. Okay, wait. You hear a voice saying, Remember when you were young and dreams could still come true? Outside, they still can. Oh man, dreams can still come true outside? Well, I should open this door then, shouldn't I? Okay, the person has disappeared, so let's go to a wait mode. Person spotted. Yeah, it's not waiting. 29 tiles away. This one is moving toward us. Yep. We're very hungry. Can I eat a bite? Nope. It's going to have to wait. Here he comes. You hear a voice saying, Afraid? Fear is just a function of the flesh. Can the light of your intellect not gaze beyond the blood and bone and see that there is no place for fear here, outside? My god, no wonder Marcus Crump lost his mind. He not only obeyed the voice that urged him to go outside during the portal storm and look beyond the blood and bone using the light of his intellect, but actually walked into the heart of the storm itself and entered another time space twice it can't be good for you all right the person seems to have gotten a little bit hung up over here oh i see the person is wandering around our let's remember to shut this door next time okay i'm gonna go back into wait mode Uh, it says, uh, you hear a voice saying, never before has the path to freedom been so straight. Never before has it been so close. 
A million tiny pinpick, pinpricks in space open for an instant and smoke fills the air. You hear a voice saying, how can I listen to you when I'm the only one speaking? Come out and express your thoughts. From the southeast you hear, put it down, we can talk about this. You hear, take my hand. You hear, what is that? You hear, get it off me. You hear quiet crying. You hear, come on, wake up. You hear, I don't want to die. You hear twice, get it off me, get it off me. You hear quiet crying. You hear, please help me. You hear, it's so cold. You hear, here, someone's here. You hear, I don't want to die. From the southwest you hear, I love you and I'll never forget you. From the southeast you hear, I don't want to die. From the southwest you hear, cover your head everyone. From the south you hear, mommy. You hear Fallon Gasket Reese saying, it's going down over there. From the southeast you hear a high pitched squeal. You hear, it's so cold. You hear, come on, they can help us. You hear, I love you and I'll never forget you. You hear, help, help. You hear, it'll be over quick, I promise. You hear, put it down, we can talk about this. You hear, don't look at the sky. You hear, take my hand. You hear agonized screaming. It'll be over quick, I promise. Mommy? Wow, the moment feels thick as if it's not quite over. I'm gonna wrap up the episode right here, ladies and gentlemen, come back in the next episode for more ex adventures of Vernon Ziegler and his dear companion, Gasket Reese who saved his life, tended to his wounds, and is now armed up and guards the door with her Benelli combat shotgun as the portal storm rages outside. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have. See you in the next one, and in the meantime, keep your head on a swivel.